In this lesson, we're going to define some commonly used terminology in data analytics and machine learning. First of all, what does the word data mean? The OECD defines data as characteristics or information, usually numerical, that are collected through observation. Data can come in many forms because almost anything can be turned into numerical values. Data can be measurements of an object or its dimensions. It can mean text, words, or sentences, or documents. It can be images. It could be sound. Data can even be video, because images, sound, and video, even though on the surface they may not appear to be numeric, actually consist of numbers. For example, the values of pixels within an image. Data can also have different types of relationships. So common relationships that are found in data are spatial relationships, where data points are related uh, through some concept of um, nearness or farness in, in space or location within space. And data can also have temporal relationships where points in data are related through, uh, through time and through how near or how far uh, within time they are to each other. We commonly break data down into two primary types of data, structured versus unstructured data. So structured data follows a set structure which is based on a set of predefined fields. So we have various records within structured data, and each record includes a number of predefined fields. So for those of you who have used a spreadsheet program like Excel, you'll be very familiar with this. Excel is based around the idea of structured data, where we have a series of rows that are the records, and each row can have multiple columns that are the predefined fields. Often structured data is stored in what's called relational databases. And it's nice to work with because it's very easy to enter and organize, and the structure that it has makes it easy to search and to analyze it. It also works very well with commonly used tools, not only by data science or machine learning practitioners, but folks who work through a variety of different roles within an organization often can interact with structured data through programs such as Microsoft Excel. Unstructured data does not follow any predefined format of fields. So examples of unstructured data would be things like images, videos, sounds, or text, where there's, there's no predefined fields or, or not even perhaps a predefined length. When we think about text, for example, a sentence can consist of any arbitrary number of words, a document can consist of any arbitrary number of sentences. So it's hard to, to predefine a structure to capture something like text. Unstructured data generally requires a set of specialized tools in order to work with it. So it's a little bit more challenging for individuals in an organization to be able to work with it without the right set of tools. However, if we look at a typical organization's data, roughly 80% of it is considered unstructured data. And this would be things like images, it might be video, or text, such as in emails or slides. 20% of their data is what's considered structured data. When we work with machine learning, we'll work with both types of data, structured and unstructured. And we'll often use different algorithms or different approaches, depending on the type of data that we're working with. Continuous data means numeric variables that can take an infinite number of possible values between any two given values. So an example of this would be the length of a part, the temperature, a person's height or weight, or even time, which can be represented by an infinite possible number of values. On the other hand, categorical data can be classified into a finite number of categories or distinctive groups. Sometimes these have a logical order or a ranking, and, and sometimes they don't. So examples could be gender, a student's major, um, colors, a type of material. And we have a third type called discrete data. And discrete data are numeric variables that have a countable number of values. So examples of this might be age, the number of parts, the year something was made. Even though they're numeric in nature, because we have a finite number of them, Often when we're doing machine learning, we'll consider these to be categorical 
variables because they fall into a finite number of possible categories or groups. Another type of, of data that we'll commonly use in machine learning modeling is what's called time series data. And time series data is organized in, in order of time. Typically, points are equally spaced by time. So we may have points representing measurements from a sensor, uh, for example, every second or every minute, every hour or every day. We may be working with stock prices where we have ticker prices every 15 minutes or daily opening and closing prices. Or we might be working with data, for example, from a smart meter where we have continuous readings and we have daily, monthly, and annual um, aggregate numbers that represent usage over time. The assumptions behind time series data, number one is the time is considered one way. We don't go back in time. It only goes forward in, in one direction. Secondly, we assume that points that are closer together in time are generally more relevant or more related to each other than points which are further away in time. So we'll now introduce some terminology that's specific to structured data. So we have an example here on the slide showing a number of houses for sale in a neighborhood in, in the local area. Each house has a number of characteristics, such as what neighborhood it's in, the school districts it's in, square footage of the house, the number of bedrooms, and the year built. And then for each house, we have a recorded market sale price of the house. So this would be a perfect example of structured data. And we're working with this type of data. We use some specific terminology when we apply machine learning. And so let's, let's go through the details of that. First of all, each row of our data, so each house in this case, is what's called an observation of our data. You'll also see it referred to as an instance of the data, an example, or a feature vector. Each column of our data is what is commonly called a feature of our data, also referred to as a factor, a predictor, an X variable, independent variable, an attribute, or even a dimension. In machine learning, we like to use a lot of different words to represent the, the same thing sometimes. Finally, the, the last column is a bit different than the other columns because the last column is what we are trying to predict, right? So the last column we call our target because the objective of a model that we'd like to build is to predict the sale price. So this can be called the target, also called a label, an annotation, response, a Y variable, or even a dependent variable. 